Hey, y'all, and thank y'all for tuning in. Now, if this is your first time, welcome. Now, if you've been here before, welcome back. Y'all, I am truly excited because we are going over the Steak Lover's Ultimate Steak Platter. And on this channel, the food is always the star, y'all. Now, we're going to take this steak platter to a whole nother level, y'all, because we are going to SOS this steak. Yes, you heard me. I didn't say SOS like this steak need help. I mean SOS like sear, oven sear, which we'll get to later, y'all. But this is the ultimate steak lover's platter. So that means we need more than just steak. We're going to get to going with these red potatoes. But first things first, when you hold a knife, please do not put your index finger on top of that spine of the knife or you may consider the back of the knife please place your index fingers on the side your thumb on the side of the knife and tuck your other fingers y'all that way you can get these potatoes sliced very thin yourself you don't need a mandolin because you have to be careful with that too as well y'all so use your knife and take your time and you can get it done the right way now, what are we going to be doing with these potatoes, y'all? Any guesses? Mm, yes, you right. We're going to be making potato ah, you gratin. Yes, potato ah, you gratin. What we going to be doing here, y'all? Mm -hmm. Now, when you take your potatoes, make sure you have a bowl of ice water ready. Have some lemon juice squeezed in that thing, too. Now, you can add some salt if you want to help Bring out the flavor of the potato, the natural flavor of the potato. Now, I didn't add any salt in here. I don't need the extra sodium, so I didn't put the salt. But you can, and you can let that soak while you get the rest of your ingredients together. Whatever you need, make sure your oven is on. Whatever heating elements you need. Now, we're using better than bouillon, y'all. Italian herb. And we are using about a stick of butter. It's less than a stick, but we have about five pounds of potatoes that we are mixing into this bowl, y'all. So keep that in mind. Now you use it according to how you need it. However you need to use the better than bouillon, use it. I used about two tablespoons in this mix. Say for instance, you were working with about a pound of potatoes. You would want to use more so like half a tablespoon, I would suggest. And you probably will want to use a quarter stick of room temperature butter. You probably will want to use a quarter cup of cornstarch and mix that well instead of using what I used. Because think about it now, the holiday seasons are coming up, so you might need to keep this video for bulk cooking method recipes, y'all, because that's what it's all about. It's about having fun because what is food? Food is entertainment, y'all. How many children throw food around? How many children stick their hands in food? I'm a chef, so I get to do it every single day for myself and my clients and all my loved ones, y'all, including y'all because you know what? Y'all are my family. Now, if you get that mixed up well, what are we going to do? We're going to add our flavor agents in there. Now, add whatever flavor agents you like, y'all, and take the time to ensure that all those potatoes are separated. Sometimes when you slice them, they kind of stick together, though, don't they? But you got to make sure you have your baking dish sprayed down or buttered down, y'all. Now, what is this, y'all? It's a block. A Kobe Jack, y'all. Not bagged. Now, if you love bagged cheese like I previously did before I got into the F&B game, which is the food and beverage game, which is pretty much my whole adult life, y'all, I promise you, you will change your opinion on bagged cheese versus block cheese once you start to just pay attention to it, y'all. I understand that it seems that bagged cheese is cheaper, but it's really not. Because if you get that block cheese, you are going to be using the amount that you need. That shredded cheese already will cause you to use more than what's required. Now, once you get the amount that's required, you get to mixing that up, y'all. Because we don't want to put too much cheese, but we want enough. So if you shake up that heavy cream that you see right there before your eyes, if you shake that up, that'll help thicken that up. Now... Since we added butter, 
and corn starch already, we a step ahead. Now we don't have to add it in here. It's already in there. So make sure when you add this, if you were just doing a pound of potatoes, you would probably want to use maybe more so like uh, three-fourths a cup of milk, depending on your dish. All right? Because I used about two and a half cups of heavy cream to three cups of heavy cream. Now, make sure you mix that well, y'all. Now, on to the steaks, y'all. Notice I have these steaks in a bowl instead of on a cutting board, on a sheet tray, on a flat surface. Because everybody don't have a flat surface. I'm showing you, use a bowl, y'all, if you don't have enough space. Just grab a bowl and rub the steaks down with that beef base. Make sure you rub it in good. You don't take a lot of beef base, y'all. Takes a little bit of beef base. So use whatever you have. Use that bowl if you don't have the counter space, y'all. Use it. All right? It is A. Okay to do so. And get to seasoning it up. Move the next steak to the top. But if you got counter space, then go on ahead and get your sheet tray. Get your grate. Keep whatever you need to get it going, y'all. And that is uh, butter. Not margarine. But butter. Now, I can't believe it's not butter, but butter. It's butter, y'all. I am taking the butter. That comes from the cow. All right? And I am putting it back onto the cow. You would be surprised how this butter adheres. And it goes much, 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 much better than oil does. Don't drown your meat in oil, y'all. From chicken to whatever your protein source is, don't drown it in oil. No. Rub it down in that butter. Add whatever flavor agents you like. Let that sit for about 15 minutes, if you have time. Now, I'm doing all this in advance before my stomach start touching my back, y'all, okay? So I let it sit for 15 minutes. And after I let it sit, I seared it. Ooh, did he put the season side down first? Mm, yes, I did. Why was I able to do that? Y'all, I was able to put the season side down first because I buttered the steaks. And I had butter in the skillet. And when I flip this skillet, you will see more of the seasoning will be on the steak than in the skillet at the end of it all. And notice I'm seasoning this side of the steak that's buttered up already, too. That's what it's all about. And we're going to sear this on high heat in a cast iron skillet. I seared this one side. The video is sped up, but I seared this one side of the steak, y'all, for about five minutes and then i flipped the steak y'all and i seared that side for about one minute that's it and i put the second steak down and i was redundant meaning i did the same exact thing i did to the first steak high heat and then i cut it off and then i flipped the steak y'all so the first steak seasoned up like this right here on high heat and then i flipped the steak and I cut the heat off, y'all. It's okay to play with your heat elements, y'all. It's okay to do so because we are searing this steak. One minute, five minutes, one minute. And immediately tossing down those onions, y'all. Them red onions. We getting those red onions in there. All right? So you done seen red potatoes. Now we got red onions. And they working on high heat in that same skillet right after the steaks got pulled up. Them red onions got dropped down, searing in that butter. And I'm getting everything else in line and in order to show y'all. Mm -hmm. Sear, oven sear, y'all. S-O-S, y'all. You have seen the first step. The first step. Now, those steaks, y'all, they rested 15 minutes after I buttered them and I seasoned them. They sat for 15 minutes at room temperature. And then... We seared them on high heat, five minutes on one side. We cut the heat off, flipped the steak, one minute, pulled it off, cut the heat back on because we want to ensure we are being redundant. I could have left the heat on low, but no, we need to cut it off, cut it back on high, heat it up, drop that 
second steak down and be redundant, y'all. And let it rest for 15 minutes and then we are ready to oven these steaks. So we have the sear method and now we are ready for the oven. Take a look at those steaks, y'all. You can see that the steaks, they almost have a Pittsburgh style sear on them, y'all. Not quite, but almost, y'all. And Because we're not looking for a Pittsburgh style sear. That's not what we're looking for. And now we have those caramelized onions, y'all. And now what I did, I took the broccolini, put them into that cast iron skillet, put the lid on it, and then I threw that in the oven, y'all. That's what I did in the meantime while the steaks were resting because it was a 15-minute rest, and then we threw them in the oven. And this is the 15 minutes after the steaks rested, after they came out the oven, we seared them. Yes, we did. This is the second sear, y'all. We are getting it going. Sear, oven, sear method right here for you to see. So you know you can do this. Now, this is also on high heat. And we're going to sear this steak for approximately three minutes. And then we rotate the steak. The steak is on high heat, y'all. We bake this steak in the oven for 15 minutes at 300 degrees. So we seared it for five minutes high heat, one side. Flipped it one minute on one side. Then we bake the steaks, y'all. 300 degrees, 15 minutes. Pull the steaks out. Let the steaks rest for 15 minutes and then cast iron sear the steaks and let them rest for three minutes, five minutes at the most. Yes, that's what it's all about. Sear, oven sear. To be honest with you, I didn't let it rest for three to five minutes. I let it rest for more like seven minutes. That's what we did before we had the steaks, y'all, because I had to get the plates and everything like that together, okay? So that is a method for you. Sear, oven, sear. We seared it five minutes high heat on one side. Then we flipped the steak over one minute, cut the heat off, pull the steak off. And this is what you get when you sear, oven, sear, the SOS method. SOS method of these steaks, y'all. Isn't that some? What are those? Crab cakes. Ooh, we wait. We didn't go over no crab cakes in this video. That's because we're going to go over crab cakes later on, y'all. But look at the potato. Ah, you grinding, y'all. That potato ah, you grinding is something, something. I'm telling you, we got the breadcrumbs on top, too, y'all. That's what we did. We added breadcrumbs to finish. So we cut the oven up after we added the breadcrumbs to brown it. And then we cut the oven off to make sure we didn't burn the breadcrumbs. And we left it in the oven with the oven cracked while we finished doing everything else that needed to get done. Look at that, y'all. Whoo-wee! That looked good there. I'm telling you all, just think about serving this to your family. Think about serving this at a catering event. The holiday season is upon us, and this is something you can serve your family, your friends, your guests, your clients, they will feel like they're at a restaurant. All you need to do to serve it like this is get you a sheet tray. Get you some parchment paper, not wax. Get you some parchment paper. Lay it out and serve it. That's what this is. This is on a sheet tray, y'all, and parchment paper. And we ate it just like this. Yes, we did. The parchment paper won't tear when you cut it with a steak knife, y'all. And to feed your family feast style like this is something. Or just lay out some butcher's paper on the table and just drop this on the table. That is what you get when you get the SOS method in a steak, y'all. Cook it just like I said and you'll get this, y'all. If you feel like it's something that we missed, let us know. And we'll add it to the playlist, y'all. Now, y'all be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, y'all. I don't say that that much in my videos. And it's for a reason, because if you're going to do it, you would have done it by now. It's no reason for me to tell you to 
subscribe, but we are trying to be in your browser section, in your up next section, y'all. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see y'all on the next side.